Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this Monday, the 18th of May. Um, continuing with um, lockdown, but in a slightly different way, we do have a bit more um, freedom. Uh, so it's lovely to <coughs> see people this morning. Good morning, Ian. Uh, welcome. Uh, morning, Annie and Mike. Uh, lovely to see you. Um, Apologies, um, uh, we, were, we were doing sort of Zoom cafe yesterday and um, it suddenly finished <clears throat> and uh, I thought that was our 40 minutes had expired but um, it does transpire that um, there's been a huge problem with um, Zoom and it sort of crashed yesterday nationally. Um, <clears throat> lots of my clergy colleagues, uh, they use Zoom for their actual services uh, which I have to say, I'll, I've never thought it's a particularly good idea because it limits the numbers in the end that you can have on it. And um, I don't think you need the kind of social interaction that Zoom gives you in order to <coughs> to have a service. Anyhow, I don't know if Zoom is um, up and running again, uh, but there has been problems with that. So apologies. Um, we all seem to get cut off in mid-flow uh, yesterday. Good morning, Danny. Uh, good morning, Bill. Lovely to see you. Um, so we were very lucky actually, our, um, uh, our rogation service didn't get interrupted because we use Facebook Live and then we upload to YouTube, um, so our service wasn't interrupted but as I said lots of my clergy colleagues were part way through doing their rogation um, Sunday services using Zoom and um, uh, it all came to an end. Uh, but we were uh, we were good. <clears throat> um, but thanks for joining us yesterday. It was um, nice to be outside uh, taking uh, the service, and um, let's hope it's not too long before um, we're able to resume services. Uh, but as I said last week, new guidelines are slowly trickling out. But I think it's important to say that I don't think there's going to be. <coughs> um, they're looking at July. But I don't think there's going to sort of be a day in July when we can just resume the normal pattern of worship that we had before in our benefice. Um, we are waiting for the morning, Peter. We are waiting for the new guidelines to uh, come out. But there are some sort of clear indications that we are only going to better use church buildings where um, social distancing for a reasonable number of people is possible. Um, so that does put a huge question mark, unfortunately, on um, St. Andrew's uh, Gussage using St. Andrew's Church because it is such a small church. Uh, I did go in there the other day and um, I think the problem is once we've got more than about six or seven people in there, uh, we will not be able to observe that two metre distancing. And of course, it's not just two metres either side of you, it's front and back. So um, we do need quite a bit of space. So I think that is going to be one of the criteria. Uh, the other criteria is obviously um, sanitisation and such like. Uh, we're going to have to make sure we provide hand gels and everything like that. And also <clears throat> looking at what's happened in Germany and other places in Europe where churches have been reopened and reading some of the guidelines, uh, so, well, some of the, not guidelines yet, but the thoughts that are on the Church of England uh, page is that after every service we are going to have to um, in a sense sanitize the church which will mean uh, someone or a couple of people literally going round and spraying every surface and wiping it that may have been touched so it, that's going to be quite a tall order uh, to achieve that um, in all of our churches so I think the most likely scenario is that we when the churches do open we will have one service on a Sunday in the benefice in a particular church if it can meet all the requirements that are necessary. And as soon as we get those, I'll be working with the church wardens and respective PCCs to, to look at how we can put that in place. Uh, of course, the whole issue about Holy Communion, um, that remains because uh, for those of you who will recall, uh, morning Lynn, uh, good morning Gordon, good morning Jenny, those of you who will recall um, just before the lockdown happened, uh, we started to, the Holy Communion services, we, we were receiving in only one kind, so people were only receiving the host, the bread, 
Um, whether Holy Communions are going to be possible even after church is opened, um, I really don't have an answer to that question. And if it was, I certainly think it would sort of be in that one kind um, of receiving communion. But of course, even when we did that previously in St Mary's and at um, uh, Pentridge, um, we weren't having to observe, observe social distancing, so people were able to come up and kneel at the altar rail. And so all of that will have to be um, uh, have to be worked out. Uh, and of course, then there is also the challenge, as I've mentioned. Uh, morning, Gemma. Lovely to see you. Uh, there is also, of course, the challenge of those people who will not be able to come to church because they've got to continue to um, self-isolate because they're in a higher risk category, and we have to look at being able to ensure that our services can be um, streamed or filmed so people can engage and, and watch them because the last thing in a sense I would want to do is just to move back to doing services in the church and then find we're excluding a whole load of people and, and of course one of the wonderful things about um, having done these daily broadcasts and online services uh, is a lot of other people have um, been joining us who uh, wouldn't normally come to church which is absolutely fantastic um, and um, I think that's a new opportunity that we need to embrace because um, uh, it doesn't suit everybody to be able to come to church on a Sunday morning and people being able to sort of log in later on, uh, watch a service, listen to an address um, <clears throat> and hold together that sense of uh, community, I think is something uh, we're going to have to um, to look at. So watch this space. Um, I hope as... Um, uh, in the next week or so, we will get some slightly clearer guidance from uh, uh, the Church of England. At the moment, the only people apparently that are allowed into church is clergy to say their prayers. Well, I haven't been going into church because my line at the moment is, is if the people of God can't enter the building, um, I'm not going to either. Apart from obviously um, issues like making sure the waters gets run every so often, bits and pieces like that. But um uh, so so um, that's where we are with that. Uh, anyhow, so we're into this week. Uh, we're moving towards the Great Feast of Pentecost in just over a fortnight's time. And of course, this Thursday is Ascension Day, the Feast of the Ascension, when we uh, remember Jesus being gathered up uh, into heaven. And that will be on Thursday. So the daily broadcast on Thursday, we will um, do something special for the Feast of the Ascension. Morning, John. Lovely to see you. Um, and then in, a, as I say, in a fortnight's time, we will have um, a Pentecost service. I haven't quite thought ahead to what we're going to do this coming Sunday. Uh, I'll let you know about that tomorrow or, <coughs> or, or Wednesday. Now, just a little bit of advance notice as well is that next week, which would have been half term, uh, is I'm going to take some leave. Um, uh, this isn't a moan and um, it's just uh, saying I haven't had any leave now since um, Christmas. Um, my family and I, we were due to go away uh, to a caravan park the week after Easter. But of course, like all of us, all our holidays and such like uh, got cancelled. And um, also um, Mondays is normally my day off. And uh, I've been doing a daily broadcast every day, including Mondays and working uh, Mondays too. So I haven't had actually any time off for nine weeks now so um, uh, what I'm going to do next week is I'm just going to take Monday through to the Saturday off so there won't be any daily broadcasts <coughs> next week um, but there will be the service on the was the third Sunday the 30th of May and that will be the Pentecost um, service so just a little bit of advance notice not this week but next week uh, there won't be any daily broadcasts because I'm just going to take uh, some time off completely and um, uh, shut down to begin to get my mind <coughs> ready for the challenge of how we're going to reopen our churches um, later um, in the year. Uh, anyhow, also haircut, um, absolutely go growing crazy. <coughs> now we have managed to set up an online giving scheme with an organisation called Golden Giving. Um, but there are there is still some sort of paperwork and things that needs to be processed. So <clears throat> we we're not sure if that's going to be up and running this week or by the end of this week. It might take a little bit longer. Um, but I do need to get a haircut. So Mrs. Vicarage is going to um, cut my hair. She's going to use a, a trimmer, and that's going to happen on Friday evening. So that's going to be your early evening 
Friday Entertainment. It will be live. You can get yourself a drink. And um, Mrs. Vicarage is going to cut my hair and we'll stream that live. <clears throat> but I want to do it as a little bit of a fundraiser. Um, all of our fundraising activities in the church have um, come, to an air, uh, come to a stop because we can't gather together and do the things we normally do. And um, this is having an impact on uh, the finances of our parish churches. And uh, we do need to try and address this a little bit. So I'm hoping uh, people will sponsor my shearing, uh, basically. Uh, we were hoping that you could just click online through this uh, Golden Giving Scheme and make a donation that way. We're not sure if that's going to be up and running. Uh, but if you would like to metaphorically buy your vicar a haircut or buy me a haircut, uh, you can either pop an envelope through the vicarage door. Anything is welcome from a pound to whatever you can afford. If you could pop an uh, envelope through the vicar vicarage door, just put on the envelope vicar's haircut and then I'll pass that all on to the uh, uh, treasurer. If you would prefer to make a bank transfer, if you want to do something electronically, if you can email me at canonrick at icloud.com, that's C-A-N-O-N-R-I-C-K, uh, at, um, canonrick at icloud.com. Um, I will pass your email on to our treasurer, Peter, who will be able to give you the backass electronic payment details um, to our bank. But if the, um, if the golden giving thing comes live before the end of the week, um, you'll be able to make a donation through that, but we're not sure that's going to be the case. Uh, morning, Stephen, lovely to see you. Uh, good morning, Mary, lovely to see you this morning. So yes, Friday evening, <clears throat> the haircut is happening. I will be Sean. And um, if you would like to make, uh, to sponsor my haircut, uh, then please either do drop an envelope through the Vicarage door or send an email to me, canonrick at icloud.com and um, I will pass you on to our treasurer and uh, he will give you the details of how to make an electronic bank transfer. So hopefully Friday evening, sometime between six and seven, uh, you can get yourself a glass of wine or whatever your poison is and uh, you can sit down and have a bit of a laugh as um, Mrs. Vicarage cuts my hair, something she has never done before. So uh, anything could happen. Um, so that's the excitement for this week. Ascension Day on the Thursday, Vicar's haircut on the Friday. Um, anyhow, let's turn to our Bible passage. And as I said, now we're looking towards the great feast of Pentecost when the church um, celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit being given to us. Um, our gospel readings now seem to point us um, in that direction. So this morning's reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 15, beginning to read at verse 26. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom shall I send to you from the father? The spirit of truth who issues from the father, he will be my witness and you too will be witnesses because you have been with me from the outset. I have told you all this so that your faith may not be shaken. They will expel you from the synagogues, and indeed the hour is coming when anyone who kills you, <clears throat> when anyone who kills you will think he is doing a holy duty for God. They will do these things because they have never known either the Father or myself. But I have told you all this so that when the time for it comes, you may remember that I told you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Um, of course, the Holy Spirit is um, absolutely crucial uh, in the Christian faith, but it's something we often sort of struggle with um, in our faith journey. Is of course uh, central to the idea is is the idea of the Trinity that God is uh, one being, but in three parts: Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, co-eternal, and um, uh, all those three parts of God are come into us. Of course, we have God, the Father, God, the Creator, in, in that sense, um, and uh, we believe that He created everything uh, around us, including <coughs> us. Um, I like to see God in a sense like a, a, a great artist that sort of flings out the stars into space and things like that. Uh, we have Jesus, His Son, and through Him, as I've said over the past few weeks we're able to have this very personal relationship, um, very personal relationship uh, with God. And then the gift of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> which is that God dwells in us. You may have heard that phrase that um, our bodies are a 
temple for the Holy Spirit, that, that God actually dwells within us. And it's this that allows us to have this very personal relationship with God. Of course, we uh, Christians believe that it is at baptism that we receive the uh, gift of the, the Holy Spirit. And um, certainly that was true uh, for me. I was baptised as a child, but I wasn't particularly aware of the Holy Spirit uh, until in my early teens when I was about 13. And in a sense, though, the Holy Spirit was, uh, I believe, was um, uh, dwelling within me. Um, it was only um, when I was about 13 through confirmation classes that I really became aware of its uh, presence. But I'll save that story for um, uh, Pentecost Sunday. But we should never underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. I heard it described once as, um, you know, if you stand under these huge electric uh, pylons out in the fields, you can you can hear a buzz. They're going because you can hear the you know millions of volts uh, going through it. And the Holy Spirit's a bit like that. It's like electricity. You can't see it. Um, but if you touch it, you'll certainly know about it. And uh, it empowers us. And. Um, We've only got a short, uh, short time this morning, but I could tell you uh, of lots and lots and lots of occasions in my own Christian life and ministry um, where I have um, felt very empowered by the Holy Spirit. And the reason I know that is because after some event or something has happened, I've sort of stood back and have felt, wow, that wasn't really me um, saying that or doing that. So the, 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 the Holy Spirit had come in and had empowered me um, to do those things. And that's clearly what we hear in both the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. And that wonderful thing uh, on the day of Pentecost when Peter, that Galilean fisherman uh, who would often engage his mouth before his brain, <clears throat> got himself into all sorts of trouble. He suddenly, empowered by the Holy Spirit, um, stands up and makes this most eloquent of speeches um, because it's the Spirit um, giving him those words. So it's a, a really, really crucial part of our uh, Christian faith and understanding. And of course, you know, you do get people who are from the more charismatic wing of the church and the Holy Spirit is very key to them. And in a sense, sometimes that does put some people off because, you know, they sort of think, oh, I'm not sure it's all that's all a bit weird. Um, having the gift of the Holy Spirit um, doesn't mean you have to speak in tongues or do all those sorts of things that some Christians do. Uh, it, it empowers us and uh, gives us courage in lots of different um uh, different ways it's very important to remember paul says there's lots of spiritual gifts and uh, the showy ones necessarily aren't the important ones um so uh, but more about that as we move on to uh, the great feast of pentecost in just over a fortnight's time so carrying on with the uh, rule of saint francis for the third order uh, again i'm going to share two with you today because obviously we didn't have one on uh, Sunday. So I'm going to share day 17 and day 18 with you today. And we move on to what's known as the um, second way of service, which is study, which is su study, the second way of service. This is eternal life to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. True knowledge is knowledge of God. Tertiaries therefore give priority to devotional study of scripture as one of the chief means of attaining that knowledge of God that leads to eternal life. That's day 17 and then uh, continued today on day 18. As well as devotional study of scripture, we all recognise our Christian responsibility to pursue other branches of study, both sacred and secular. In particular, some of us accept the duty of contributing through research and writing to a better understanding of the church's mission in the world, the application of Christian principles to the use of the distribution of wealth, questions concerning justice and peace, and of all other questions concerning the life of faith. So the second way uh, of service is study, which is quite interesting because I, I mentioned before that if you read things like the Little Flowers of St Francis and some of the history of St Francis, um, he wasn't a massive fan of academics and people that um, wanted to spend their, all their time uh, studying. I mean, that was very much what he had seen in the monastic Benedictine uh, movement, um, you know, the great libraries and such like and people reading books. And um, um, Francis's sort of approach and attitude was um, we shouldn't be sitting around reading books. We should actually be 
uh, out preaching the love of God and um, helping God's people. And there is a, a, a story uh, in the um, <clears throat> history of St. Francis um, where a young monk comes to him, a young friar comes to him and asks uh, if he can spend some time studying. And um, uh, Francis is very, very, very cross with him and um, uh, tells him that um, it's a complete waste of time to study. Anyhow, as the centuries have moved on since St. Francis, Franciscans have realised that there is an importance, particularly in studying scripture. And I think that's something that Francis um, would not have barked at, um, knowing our Bibles and learning to understand them, the history and the context and to interpret them is very, very important. Um, the Bible can be a very dangerous book. And if we come to it with closed eyes and just literally take everything as read, we end up in all sorts of problems. So to be able to understand the context of when the various letters and books are written in the Bible, the history, the cultures of the people um, is really important in understanding <coughs> God's message to us. So there we go. That's uh, that's study. So um, I'm going to head off for a bit of a walk later on this afternoon with camera if uh, the weather's good. Got a few jobs to do around the vicarage. I'm also getting ready this week on Wednesday. I ask for your prayers because the Rural Hope team, my other job as a rural field officer, uh, we're holding an online workshop. Let's hope Zoom works properly for that uh, on Wednesday, where we're assessing all the work that we've done over the past year and um, how the Rural Hope team offering um, support and helping churches, rural churches to develop mission and outreach projects and how we're going to move that forward. Also, with the huge challenge we face at the moment with the lockdown and that's probably going to continue um, for most of this year. And how do we support churches uh, at this time? And I think one of the areas is going to be looking at how we can help rural churches in developing an online um, digital um, ministry um, because some have and some haven't. So uh, that's going to be on Wednesday. Uh, I'll be doing that with our team, lovely team leader, Sarah Keane, and some of the other team. So do hold us in your prayers um, then. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we move into this new week, we ask, Lord, that your spirit accompanies us. And as we prepare for the great feast of Pentecost, we pray, Lord, that we may feel your Holy Spirit within us, that that spirit may be stirred up and that you will give us all that we need in order to share your love with others, to tell of your great story and to love our neighbours as ourselves. We pray, Lord, for all of those who are going back to work this week. We pray for our schools as they look at the challenges of uh, bringing children back into school. And we pray especially today, Lord, for all of those who have lost their jobs, for those who have been made redundant, for those now who are struggling to find work. We pray, Lord, for them and their families and for all organisations, those people who work at our job centres, for Citizens Advice Bureau and all of those who will be trying to help those families. We pray, Lord, for this coming week that we may be able to find, even in these difficult and strange times, uh, a sense of joy and fellowship. And we ask your blessings upon us this day and always. Amen. So thank you for being with me uh, this morning. I hope you have a, a splendid day. Uh, whatever you're doing, as I say, a few got a few jobs to do. And um, then I'm going to head out for a bit of a walk later on and um, uh, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. And uh, do put a date in your diary for Friday evening for the Vicar's haircut. Um, all the best. Let's just finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Do take care, folks, and uh, have a good day.